Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. As we all very much know, One Piece is a series that does very well to glorify and honour the status of the elderly. Characters like Whitebeard, Rayleigh and Garp are some of the most prolific figures in the story. However, there is a neglected aspect of our elders in One Piece. I'm talking about the people who chose to live a more, let's say, simple life and have aged in a way that reflects their level of strength in the world. To be blunt, we are going to examine feeble old men. And the criteria for this list is as follows. To be considered a feeble old man, a character must have visible signs of advanced aging, such as grey hair, wrinkles, etc. And they must possess no more than the strength of the average human. Ideally, much less, being feeble and all. But with that out of the way, let's begin. Welcome to the top 5 feeble old men in One Piece. Number 5. Toto. Let's kick things off with Koza's father, a resident of the desert nation of Alabaster, specifically the city of Yuba. Now originally Toto was quite a plump looking individual, however his journey along the road of feebility would be triggered by an extreme drought brought on by the nefarious schemes of one Sir Crocodile. As a result, Toto shriveled up and aged rather rapidly in a short amount of time, and eventually became the lone resident of the all but abandoned city of Yuba. And being both incredibly stubborn yet hopeful, Toto continued to bore for water, insisting that the city of Yuba will never die. Toto is also a staunch monarch, believing in the power of the history that he has no doubt lived through. This is a very common attitude seen in all classes of feeble old men. Furthermore, I'd like to point out that at one stage, Toto literally berated a sandstorm that was threatening to cover up a puddle of water that he had found. And you know what? That sounds like the actions of a feeble old man to me. Number 4. Haridas. Let's continue proceedings with Nami's time skip tutor who resides on the sky island of Weatheria. Haridas is best visually characterized by what I would describe as wizard chic, sporting a full on Gandalf beard, a set of vibrant robes, and your stock standard wizard hat. Wizard hat? Surely that, surely that has a more official name. No, no, apparently it doesn't. In any case, despite the magical vibes Haridas exudes, he is actually an accomplished weather scientist and is able to summon a wide array of wind phenomena from the act of tying and untying simple knots. So yeah, maybe he is a wizard. But that is irrelevant because Haridas is also incredibly feeble, having easily been kidnapped by Nami, who was able to carry this old soul in one arm. Haridas also fits the bill by often acting like an incredibly simple-minded and bumbling individual who is easily frightened and has a penchant for yelling, oi, oi, Yoi over and over again, as if we didn't hear him the first time. Despite that, he is also very carefree and absurdly patient, even when being hit over the head by some young whippersnapper. So well done, Haridas. You are certainly one hell of a feeble old man. Number three, Mayor Boodle. Much like Toto, Boodle is a relic of the past who has a deep love for his home and possesses an iron will to see its protection. As such, Boodle willingly prepared for battle after Orangetown had been taken over by a mad clown. Although being a feeble old man, Luffy was easily able to prevent him from going into combat. Because remember that one time Luffy smashed a helpless old man's face into a wall? He didn't restrain him, he didn't punch him, he just smashed him into a wall. I mean, that's, that's just classic millennial behavior right there. No respect for his elders whatsoever. And to make matters worse, Luffy then used Boodle's unconscious body as a table to eat avocados on toast. I mean, God, what is this world coming to? But Boodle's plight would eventually lead to the liberation of Orangetown. And to this day, Boodle is continuing his feeble old man lifestyle in peace. Number two, Tonjit. While previous contenders on this list have been fairly honourable and mentally lucid characters, we now move to Tonjit. Back in his prime, or I guess the word prime is a bit of a stretch, back in his slightly less feeble days, Tonjit had one goal in mind, and that was to break the world record for something or other to do with standing on stilts. Unfortunately, Tonjit chose bamboo for his stilts, which grew at such an incredible rate that soon enough, Tonjit was unable to get down. As his stilts grew taller and taller, Tonjit grew feebler and feebler until he was quote unquote rescued by the Straw Hats. And as we got to know him, it became clear that Tonjit was one of the more senile members of society that we have ever met in the series. With a train of thought that often branches off, crashes, burns, and sometimes believe that it's actually driving a hovercraft rather than a train. And as a result, Tonjit absolutely deserves his place here, but there is still one feeble old man in need of recognition. Number 1. Whoop Slap. As the mayor of Fusha village, Whoopslap is the ultimate that the world of feeble old men has to offer. As a man who once proudly sported a Rastafarian hat, Whoopslap used to be with it, but then they changed 
liquid it was. Nowadays, Whoopslap is a grand master of the feeble arts, which is evidenced by his ceremonial cane and unparalleled ability to criticize those younger than him. To be fair, as a peaceful man, Whoopslap has witnessed notorious criminals such as Luffy, Dragon, Ace, and Sabo spring up from his home. But hey, the rest of Future Village loves this. So this old codger just needs to get with the times and realize that pirates and revolutions are all the rage these days. With that said, deep down, Whoopslap does have a heart and he cares greatly for all of the aforementioned characters. Except Dragon, maybe. We really don't know what he thinks about Dragon. To top everything off, Whoopslap even has his own familiar in the form of Makino, also known as the only person in the village willing to listen to him, which is just the epitome of feeble. In fact, if we look up the dictionary definition of feeble old man, and look, yep, there's Whoopslap. And I think with that, it's pretty conclusive that Whoopslap deserves the honor of number one. And that pretty much does it for the top 5 feeble old men in One Piece. If you enjoyed this video then feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe, and please do comment with your own favorite feeble old men. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.